Thanks for having me. All right. Many of you have heard of real-time advertising. Maybe you call it programmatic or the ad exchange. Well, today, I'd like to share with you how I stumbled upon this big idea that disrupted advertising. Let me take you back to 2003. The dot-com market has fallen apart. I am an unemployed computer scientist living in New York, trying to figure out what to do next in my life. I have two job offers. One from Lehman Brothers. Now, we all know that in 2008, Lehman Brothers took down the American financial system, but at this time, they were hiring people like me, trying to help figure out whether or not their credit derivatives were going to destroy the financial system. So that was a good job offer. Or I could join an ad network. Those are my choices. Now, I didn't really know what an ad network was. And so as I began to learn about the online advertising industry, you need to remember that this was the beginning of advertising online. It was only a few short years since the first banner ad had appeared on the internet, and we were just trying to figure out how to make an online advertising business work. So this little ad network that I joined was called Right Media. Now, the way this network works, I made a little picture for you, is that you call on publishers, websites, and you say, listen, can I have some of your advertising inventory? And then you call some advertisers and you say, hey, I've got this great ad network, these, these websites, would you give me some money and some ads? And we'll connect the dots. And the ad network makes money in the middle. The more money you get from advertisers, the more money you pay publishers, you make money in the middle. It's a great business. And so in 2003 and 2004, Right Media grew slowly into being a profitable little online advertising business. Now, I was the chief technology officer. My job was to build technology that would figure out which ad to show on every impression. Now, this went pretty well. And then, later in 2004, in November, I was at a conference like this, and a gentleman walked up to me named Alad Ephraim. He said, listen, I'm running an ad network. I've heard your technology is very good. Is there any chance you'd license us your software so that I could use it to run my ad network? Now, this was our secret sauce. This algorithm that I'd built was why our ad network was so successful, so at first I said no. But then he said, listen, our business is in Europe. Yours is in the United States. We don't compete. Why don't you let us use your software here? And so all of a sudden, we had two ad networks. Now, over the next few months, we added a few more. And so by March of 2005, there were four or five different ad networks using our platform. And then I had a really interesting realization. This company in Europe had all of these publishers who had American traffic. Not everybody visits these sites from Europe. And at the same time, in the US, we had advertisers who were looking for, for more inventory. Why couldn't we take the advertisers from our network in the US and spend their money on the overseas traffic from this network in Europe? And so I thought, why can't we just connect all these ad networks up in the middle? So on April 1st, 2005, I connected the dots. I pulled all of the advertisers and publishers across these ad networks together. And by accident, I invented the ad exchange. Now let me tell you what happened on April 1st. I was sitting at my desk in our office, not a very big office, and I kept clicking F5 on my keyboard because that would refresh the reporting. And I was watching the numbers come in, and something very strange was happening. Publishers were making more money across the entire platform. And at the same time, advertisers were seeing better results. Their cost per click and per acquisition were dropping. And every network was making more money. Now, how is this possible? How can every single participant make more money? Well, think about it. Publishers make money when there are more advertisers. And now, every advertiser and every publisher are connected. So there's more bidding on the publishers. And for the advertisers, they can pick from even more inventory across the whole internet. And so it kind of makes sense. More inventory means better results for advertisers. More demand means better results for publishers. And all of a sudden, something strange starts happening. 
all these networks realize that every time another one joins the system, everybody makes more money. In any marketplace, anywhere on the internet or the world, the more participants, the more money for everyone. And my phone starts ringing. Network after network calls and says, can I join your exchange? Let me give you some numbers. In January of 2004, we served 1 billion impressions. In January of 2005, we served 2 billion impressions. By the summer of 2005, we're serving 5 billion, 10 billion. All of a sudden, we run out of, of servers. We can't even serve this much volume because my phone is ringing so much. I decided that we'd have to stop signing new clients. And this is when you know you have a good business idea. People were trying to bribe me to let them join our platform. That's a good business. So we finally started adding more clients, and by January of 2006, 35 billion ads a month. January 2007, 100 billion ads a month. The ad exchange transformed the digital advertising space. It was an incredible idea just by connecting buyers and sellers into a marketplace. And in July of 2007, Yahoo swooped in and bought the company, Right Media, for $800 million. So, that was good. I was very happy. The best part, I didn't have to work for Yahoo. I left. And yet again, I found myself sitting in New York over a summer, unemployed, trying to figure out what to do with my life. And, uh, you know, part of me said, we're done with ad tech. We've created one revolution. We've taken these disparate ad networks, we've built an ad exchange. Let's find another interesting business to start. And so I did. I started a cloud computing company. This is right when Amazon Web Services was starting. And I was thinking about myself back when Right Media was starting to grow and scale and thinking how hard it was to find enough servers to keep up with our clients. And so our idea was we would be the cloud computing company for the next generation of marketplaces and, and startups. And that went well. But something else happened in 2007. Microsoft bought a company called Aquantive. Google bought a company called DoubleClick. And all these big technology companies, these tech giants, Yahoo, of course, with Right Media, were thinking, hmm, I like this thing where somebody sits in the middle and makes a lot of money. How about instead of helping all these other companies make money, we tax every single advertising transaction on the internet? All of a sudden, instead of being an efficient marketplace, the exchange turned into something inefficient. And I especially blame Google, who used their acquisition of DoubleClick to force every publisher on the planet, just about, to use the Google Advertising Exchange. You had no choice. Now, I invented this. I was not going to let this stand. We are not going to let Google run away with my idea. And so I began to invent a new technology that would help these publishers, who are now being taxed by Google, reconnect to all their sources of demand. And so in 2009, I invented a technology called header bidding. Not a very good name, I apologize. But the idea was that instead of sending all of our requests off to a central server like Google's, we could actually use the header of the page before the page loads and ask each of these different demand sources to give us a bid. And in the blink of an eye, between when the content of the page loads and when the ad loads, we could figure out who the highest bidder would be and show the best ad without ever having to work with a single central exchange. Now, what did that mean? It turns out that every single publisher who tried it made 20% more money, every time. I'm not sure there's a single publisher over the past six or seven years who's turned on header bidding who hasn't made more money. So again, here's a disrupted technology, very simple, that completely changed the economics and the control of the internet. And I'm very proud of this because instead of having AppNexus, my company, own this technology, we open sourced it. Prebid.org, any of you with a website or an app can go to prebid.org, download this technology, and install it on your site or your app right now. And you control your connections to the advertising industry. Now that's a revolutionary change. And I think it's been very good 
for the economics of the internet. So another key disruption. First, we, we created liquidity. We connected all the buyers and sellers. And then we disintermediated the middleman. But you know what, this time, I'm not unemployed. I'm here. I've got a thousand brilliant people around the world, here in Germany, with some of the best partners and clients. Axel Springer, here in Germany, Yahoo Japan, Microsoft, LinkedIn, some of the biggest companies in the world who aren't satisfied with this ecosystem yet. I think there's more to do. And so what I want to talk about for a couple of minutes is, where do we go with programmatic next? Now, we're not there yet, but here's my big idea. We keep forgetting, in my diagrams at least, about the advertiser. Why is it good for the advertiser to have so many ad networks or so many different ad tech companies between them and the publisher? Now, some of you may say, this is a complicated slide. You're right. If you've seen the LumaScape, there are so many different ad tech companies that perform different functions. You may say, but wait, I'm not a network. I'm a DSP. I'm a trading desk. I'm an SSP. We have so many names for these companies that sit between the advertiser and the publisher. But I believe this is causing confusion. I believe it's inefficient. And I believe it erodes trust in programmatic. The solution to this problem is simple. Transparency. When you give money to Google, when you buy through DBM, do you know how much of your money actually ends up with the publisher? I don't. They won't tell you. Now, on the positive side, when you give your money to Facebook, I can tell you exactly how much Facebook gets. All of it. So there's no transparency problem with Facebook. What I believe is that we should know where our money goes. And once we find out, we can make better choices about who we want to work with. We can give our money to the most efficient participants in this market. And in fact, we can create a new kind of entity in the real-time advertising space. And I believe that is the transparent marketplace. A marketplace, by definition, connects buyers and sellers. Transparency means that there is a fixed or known cost that's very cheap. Let's take these 20, 30, 40 percent taxes that we've seen from all of these programmatic companies, and let's take that down to the single digits. Let's guarantee to advertisers and publishers this transparency. Let's use new technologies like blockchain to create a public ledger so everyone knows exactly where their money goes. And let's let anyone who meets our standards participate so that no company, not Google, not Apple, not Amazon, not AppNexus, can control this ecosystem. Because it's too big and too important for the internet for us to let that happen. Let me tell you what I mean. I believe that the internet over the past 20 years has been a virtuous cycle. The biggest companies on the internet are advertising companies. Google, advertising. Facebook, advertising. You may not know this, but Alibaba makes the vast majority of its money from advertising. Those advertising dollars fund the creation of content. So those A's and those P's, those are real businesses. These are the publishers, these are the journalists, these are the game developers that create all the content that we love on the internet. And we, as consumers, benefit from this cycle. And what do we pay? We pay with our attention. Our eyeballs on advertiser ads influence our decisions. They let us go and buy these products, and that encourages advertisers to spend more money. So as long as this cycle works, as long as we see a free flow of money from the advertiser to the publisher, that funds the content that we all consume every day. If you have a major company, a Google, that's taxing that connection between advertiser and publisher, that's money that's not going to the production of content. So I believe we have an obligation to innovate in advertising. Every dollar that we can pull back from the advertiser to the publisher, the more efficient we can make internet advertising, the more money marketers will spend, the more content publishers will produce, and the better the internet will be for us every day. So I'd encourage all of you, let's keep striving for a better internet. I think it's possible, I think it's exciting, and I don't think it's that far away. Thank you.